Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet, and we're going to do another video today on HappyJS, which is a Node.js framework. Uh, for anybody that missed the first one, uh, you can head over to CodePlanet.io and check out our original Introduction to Happy video. Um, but it's been the most popular so far, so I wanted to keep going with the series. Uh, so last time what we covered was downloading and installing Happy, and then getting a very, very, very basic server working. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I've just kind of back over here, I've uh, just done the npm init, and then I did node or npm install happy dash dash save, and then I have this very very basic index.js file. Um, make that a little bigger. So we require happy. We have a new server. Put the connection on port 3000, and then a little console log in here. So if we go ahead and run that, node dot, it'll say that it's running at 3000. And then if we come over here and go to localhost 3000, we'll see this 404 not found, which is fine. We don't have anything set up yet. So that's what we wanna see. So today we're gonna to follow up on that a little bit and we're gonna talk about Happy's routing system. Uh, they have a bunch of really good docs over on their tutorials and their API section here. Uh, but we're just gonna go through a few basic examples today. So I'm gonna close this server. I'm gonna go back into index.js. The first example will just be like a very, very, very simple get route. So we can do something like this. We can do the server dot route. And then this is a function that takes an object. And in that object, we're going to pass a couple of key value pairs. So the method that we want, these are HTTP methods. So like get, post, update, uh, get, post, put, delete. Those are the four. And uh, so for right now, we're just going to do this one with just a get. So it's going to be when this is accessed via like a browser or an HTTP get request. Uh, the other thing that we need to enter is what path. Uh, and as I talked about in a couple of our other videos, if you ever want to do the very root of your app, you, no matter what framework, you're always going to specify it with just a slash like this. So when a GET request comes to localhost port 3000, what do we want to do? Uh, and then the what do we want to do goes into this handler key here. And the key takes a function as a value. And that function gets access to two things, uh, a request object and also a reply object. And we can talk later about a lot of the cool things you can do with that. But for today, I really just want to focus on the reply object. So the reply is what you're going to give back to your users when they send a GET request to your website. So let's do a very basic example, and we can just reply with a string. So we can say, hello from Code Planet, something like that. Uh, okay, so we've got this server route. It takes a GET request to localhost 3000, and what it does in return is it replies, hello from Code Planet. So let's go ahead and save this and run node on it. Looks like it compiles, so we'll go back over here and we'll refresh localhost 3000, and now instead of a 404, we have this hello from Code Planet. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to cover is if you need, I guess we'll cover two things at the same time. So let's go back into here, and let's say that we wanted to both have an endpoint that wasn't a top level endpoint, so like maybe a user slash username or something like that. And also I wanted to show how you can take a parameter of you know whatever is in the URL and use that for the data. So let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna make a new server dot route and we're gonna pass in an object again. And we'll still stick with the method get for here. Uh, and then this time we'll do a little bit something different with a path. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if it goes to uh, users, right, slash, and then let's say username, something like that, right? So if the if somebody sets in user slash John or user slash Kelly or whatever they want, uh, now we have this kind of variable username to work with. Um, and so what we can do here is we can do another handler, uh, and that takes a function like this. We get our request and our reply object here. And then what we can kind of spit back this time a little bit different is we can do a reply of hello from code planet, maybe a little comma there, uh, and then we'll concatenate um, request dot params, params uh, dot username. And so now what we're looking for is, um, let's add a little, uh, concatenate a little, keep, keep consistent with that there. Uh, so now what we've got is hello from code planet, and then it reaches into the request and it looks for this parameter username, which we've specified as whatever gets typed in after users. Uh, and it'll say, hello from Code Planet, request params username. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this code. We'll run node on it again. Looks like it built nicely. 
Uh, so we'll refresh here. We still have hello from Code Planet. And then if we go to slash users slash John, now it says hello from Code Planet, John. Uh, if we put something in here like Kelly, hello from Code Planet, Kelly. Um, and then one other thing I guess that we should just talk about real quick is that whenever you're taking data like we are uh, and injecting it into the screen, there's always like a security concern that you want to be aware of. Um, and that's that people can post like arbitrary JavaScript in here and then force you to execute it, which could be dangerous. Uh, so, and it's in their uh, tutorials as well. But one thing that you'll always want to be considerate of when you're doing something like this is that you escape uh, everything that you're about to use, the parameter. So you can just do something like JavaScript's built-in uh, encode URI component uh, and just wrap it in that, something like that. Uh, so there we go, encode URI component, username, run node again, uh, and it'll still work the same like this. But now it'll be safe if somebody tries to insert some malicious JavaScript code in there. Um, so that's what I wanted to cover in that video. Um, we'll get into some more of the plugins in the next video, I think. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks.